Hi, and welcome to The Subscriber Project. My name is Kelly O'Brien, and I'm an online marketing and business storytelling coach, and I help you move your most aligned clients from discovering who you are online through to investing with you using storytelling, strategy, and systems. And today, as I mentioned, I wanna talk about The Subscriber Project. This is the first time I'm introducing uh, this um, idea. It's actually a personal project for me. However, I wanted to share it publicly in the hope that it might help you as well when you're looking at uh, building your email list and also in turn building your business. Now, I, back in 2012, 2013, I had about 100 to 200 people on my email list and I couldn't for the life of me figure out how I could grow this. I've been in business um, a few years, but trying to, tr to get this email list to grow just felt like, you know, uh, pulling, you know, blood out of a stone type of thing. It was very, very frustrating and I didn't know how I could shift that. Now, one day I was looking in the back end of my Google Analytics and noticed that one of my blog posts was getting an exceptional amount of traffic. I also had, um, I was using a tool at, the, at, at that time where you could upload files so that people could download them. And I had um, a media, um, media template in there that people were downloading from this blog post. And I noticed that I had a thousand, over a thousand people had downloaded this media plan and I hadn't once asked for an email address or a name and I realized that that was a huge missed opportunity for me because these people downloaded the media plan and then bounced. I never saw them again and had no way to follow up, had no way to build um, a relationship, to nurture that and then to invite them to work with me. So I quickly changed that and that blog post to this day continues to attract both traffic and email subscribers. And it's something that, um, you know, I was only reading uh, in something today where it was mentioned that you cannot get leads today without spending money on uh, Facebook or Google ads or any type of advertising. And I don't believe that that's true. My business has been proof that organic still works um, as long as you do it smartly. And yes, sometimes it can take a bit more time, but I wanna show you what I'm doing in my business how it's working um, and how you can do it too if you happen to want to come along for the ride. Now, of course, you don't have to. Uh, you might just take a couple of tips out of this and that's fine, but this is my journey and, and, and um, that's what I really want to share with you today, but hopefully you get something out of it. Now, the first thing that I want to focus on in today's video, being the very first one, is of course the planning side of things. How do we set our goals? What is it that we're working towards? And um, how can, you know, how can we make this realistic and also not overwhelming? So the first thing that we need to do, there's three things really when we're looking at um, a new project or anything that you're uh, about to focus on in your business. The three things that um, I focus on, first of all, is what is the end goal? So the end goal for me is, of course, um, clients and traffic. So I need to then uh, put some effort into figuring out how many more clients can I actually sustain in my business? Now, I'm already fairly booked. So um, I don't want to heap more one-on-one -on -one clients, but it would be great to have more people coming through on the digital side of my business as well. However, having that consistent flow of uh, leads coming in means that I don't have to do any aggressive um, marketing. I don't have to go out there and push myself too hard to get clients once um, a client's contract ends. So looking at what is the big picture goal, so for me, I would love to have another six clients in my business. Now, I'm already fairly um, you know, tight in my business. I already have um, quite a full list of clients, but I would love to have more coming through, even if that means that I have to create a wait list. So my number is for six more one-on-one -on -one, uh, clients. And of course, I'd love to get digital clients as, as, or digital sales as well in my business. But um, to be honest, the digital sales are never what pays the bills. Um, it's the one-on-one -on -one clients, and that's what really lights me up as well because it's where you see the greatest change. So that's my uh, first part of the goal is to, uh, to gain one-on-one -on -one clients. What is the goal for you when you're looking at um, growing your business? What uh, is the outcome that you most want in your business right now? It can be monetary and it can be our uh, client numbers. Whatever makes the most sense, sense to you. It might be digital. Um, product sales, um, make it make sense to you. 
The next part is figuring out who it is that you're actually targeting. Now you need to figure out uh, who this person is. If you haven't done any ideal client work, I would highly encourage you to um, put some effort into doing that and I'll provide a link with this video uh, to help you do that if you haven't done it or if it's been a while since you, you've done it. Now this is something that I do uh, quite regular. I probably do it once a year in my business where I sit down and reassess my ideal client because as I work with more and more people, I get a clear idea of the type of person I do want to work with and the type of person that I don't want to work with. So as you continue to work with people, keep reassessing that so that you're attracting people that light you up, that you know that you can get a result for. Um, and, you know, that's the end goal for me is if I can change someone's business and change their life, then that's more important than just getting money in the door. So when we look at that ideal client, the other thing that I need to be focusing on is what is their pain point? What is it that um, they're most struggling with right now that's in my area of genius? So for me, it's people want to be able to automate some of their business or they want to have some consistency. They want to have clients coming through um, or sales coming through on a consistent basis, but they don't want to do any slimy, pushy, aggressive type um, marketing. They want it to feel authentic. They want to be able to share their story and have people um, attracted to them. So um, rather than obviously pushing their message out and, and people, you know, having buyer's remorse as soon as they sign up. So that's a really important um, to look at. What is their pain points? What are they struggling with? Now, I've uh, kind of identified two um, types of people that I tend to work with. It's the person who's quite creative, but really struggles. So they're, you know, great at writing and, and great at uh, telling stories but they struggle with what is the strategy and how do I set all the techie stuff up? So that's one person. The other person um, is quite good at techie stuff. Um, sometimes usually still lacks a bit of strategy. They can probably do strategy for other people, but not for themselves, which is very common. Uh, but when it comes to the creativity side of things, telling stories, writing, getting their message out there, then they really struggle with it. So I have two sides um, and two types of people, but their end goal is still the same, that they want to be able to attract um, the right people into their business on a consistent basis. The other thing is also then their aspirations. So what is it that they're trying to attract? As I said, it's the consistent um, consistent leads coming through but it's also for them it's really important to be able to, to tell their story and to be able to um, to have a business that they love doing that they don't wake up every morning think oh I've got to I've got to do this marketing thing they actually enjoy marketing as well so think about for you who is it that you're most trying to attract what is their pain points um, what is it that they most want uh, where do they want to be what does life look like and for me a lot of my ideal clients um, don't want to have the laptop on their knee until 11 o'clock at night still trying to, to get emails out and, and do marketing. They want to know that they can leverage their times. So if they do create um, a marketing piece that it can be leveraged, that means that they get back more time, that they can go and do school pickup, that they can go and, um, you know, go and walk the dog every morning to be able to get back into that health cycle um, and looking after themselves again. So there's lots of things there around trying to find, uh, find more time in the day uh, so that their business doesn't become all consuming. So that's number two is who is your ideal client? And then the end, uh, the final point that I wanted to share today is that um, okay, we have a goal at the beginning, a big overarching goal, but then our third one is also another goal. And this is the goal of our subscribers. How many email subscribers do we need to have to reach that goal? So for me, how many email subscribers do I need to get six clients? I'm going to share um, my calculator with you right now and I'll share a link to it so that you can play around with it yourself, your own numbers. These are my numbers. I'm just going to share my screen right now. So here's the calculator and what we're looking at is uh, how, many, uh, how many sales do I want to get? So I've said six sales. Um, now with when it comes to conversion rate, everybody's conversion rate is very different. So some people um, may have, you know, I've had clients who've had up to 9% conversion rate, some even higher than that. Um, and some of them around, you know, down around 0.5%. Now the average is one uh, to 3% conversion rate but again it's going to depend on your business and you need to figure that out for yourself. I also find that the dollar value um, and how much people need 
this item also can um, play a big part in it as well. So if it's my $30 calendar, for example, then the conversion rate is usually around 7 to 9%. Um, when it, I'm talking about coaching, it tends to be a lot lower. Um, and it's more the fact, not even that it's um, much lower, that it's a longer life cycle. So someone might sign up to my email list and buy my calendar within a couple of days. Whereas for um, my coaching, for example, it can take nearly not, you know, can take around 90 days for someone to actually uh, commit to getting on a call and, and deciding whether or not they want to work with me. Sometimes it's even longer than that. I've had, you know, uh, one lady was, uh, I think it was seven or nine years that we worked out between the time that I got to know her and the time that we actually worked together. So um, if you're doing coaching or you're doing services, then know that the the timeline can be a little bit longer. So I would like to overcompensate for that. So even though um, I'm going to say, oops, I can get this to work, 0.5%, if I can work on, on that to get my six people, then I need to get 1,200 people on my list. Now, of course, my goal is actually um, even bigger than that. I would love to have another 10,000 people on my list. And that's what I want to work towards. So even though my big goal is six, and I, and I feel that I could get that into 100 people, um, I'd like to make it, um, I'd like to give myself a, a subscriber goal of 10,000 people. Now you need to determine what it is for you. What is your base level that you'd like to have? So for me, it's, um, I'd be happy with 1,200 because it means that's where I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I've reached my goal. Um, ideally, I'd love to get more than that, obviously. So I would um, maybe look at 2,000 or 3,000 as my middle goal. And then my stretch goal or the goal that um, feels like uh, if I did it, I would, um, you know, ride the unicorn type of thing. Then that um, goal would be 10,000. I'd love to get 10,000. Now, all of that sounds pretty overwhelming when you think about 10,000. For some of you... Um, you know, 100 people might feel quite overwhelming right now and for others, um, 10,000 might not feel like a big stretch. So it depends where you are in your business. But what I tend to look at is focusing on 1,000. So if um, 1,000 still feels too big, go back to 100, that's fine, or even 500 if that makes sense, if that makes sense to you and your business. But if we focused on 10,000, I would give up pretty quickly. So if I focus on 1,000 at a time, not giving myself a specific time limit, just um, keep working towards getting 1,000, counting down um, those 1,000 people as they come through, then that gives me a clearer uh, goal that feels more achievable, that's not going to be overwhelming and that I'm not going to give up on. So what is that for you? What, um, what numbers make the most sense in your business that you want to be working towards. So it's great to get yourself a chart or um, a spreadsheet if you love spreadsheets. Uh, and I'll have a, a download of one that you can, or a download of a pack of different things that you can um, take. There'll be a resources page where you can download um, to keep track of what your, one, what your goals are. So a calculator to be able to calculate your goals. And then the second part of that is um, that ability to fill out your um, fill out your what your numbers are for your business how many subscribers do you want to get and then obviously being able to check off a thousand at a time some months you'll fly by and all of a sudden a thousand will happen very quickly other months you'll find that it's a very very slow journey so just see how it goes for you uh, let's start at a thousand each and um, make sure you've written down what your goals are because that in itself is quite powerful being able to see that put it somewhere that you can see all the time so that you focus on the thing that you most want to attract in in your business and in your, in your life so um, hopefully this, this uh, video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them below. But as you can see, my goal is six clients and 10,000 more added to my email list. Let's see how we go. Looking forward to this journey and I hope that you come along for the ride with me. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.